So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, please uh, join me today with uh, chapter 11. And in chapter 11, we're talking about the pricing strategies. So, uh, let's see what we've got here. Uh, do you see on the screen uh, pricing strategy? Uh, in pricing strategy, in this chapter, we're going to discuss the new product pricing strategy. If you remember last class when we talked about chapter 9, and uh, we talked about the importance of uh, coming up with a new product. And uh, we thought uh, maybe we can have this new product, which was uh, uh, this special battery that lasts for six months. So how much do we price such product? Expensive. Do we make it very expensive? Yeah. Uh, or do we make it very cheap so no one competes with us? So we'll talk more about that. We'll talk about product mix pricing strategies, how we make adjustments, how we do price uh, changes and uh, public policy and marketing. Now, when we talk about new product pricing, we've got two strategies. Strategy number one, we call it skimming. What do we mean by skimming? We mean we sell very high. Another uh, strategy is you do market penetration. That's when you do very low. So sometimes you do high, sometimes you do low. Let's see which one uh, you do when. You do market skimming, it's a strategy with high initial price to skim revenue layer from the market. So here you make a lot of money. You want to get all of the profits that you can make. One shot, like one shot. You can, you know, it, it's going to, you need to make sure that you have a product that has a good quality and this quality supports uh, this high price. Uh, so maybe for this uh, new battery, uh, maybe it's the quality makes it very attractive, so it's okay to be expensive. Buyers must want that product at that price, so we don't want to make it very expensive to the point where people don't want that high price. The cost of producing the product in small volume should not cancel the advantage of higher prices. Remember, if you make it very expensive, will a lot of people buy it? No. Few people will buy it. And if few people will buy it, means you will make few units. And if you make few units, it means it will, it will not be the best price uh, or the best cost that you will have to pay for it. Therefore, you need to be able to sell it expensive and yet not have high ex, uh, cost. This way you can make profit. Uh, and competitors should not be able to enter the market easily. So if this battery, you made it and it's new and no one can copy it, it's okay you do skimming. But if the price, if the product is on the other hand, uh, more of any one of these conditions cannot be hold true, then uh, it will be very difficult that you do skimming. Then you may think about penetration. And uh, when we talk about penetration, we're talking about how you can set a, uh, how can you set a low initial price in order to penetrate uh, the market quickly and you deeply to attract a new large number of buyers quickly to gain market share. So sometimes if you think this new battery that lasts for six months uh, doesn't fit some of the skimming uh, pricing uh, requirements, maybe you want to go with a uh, more penetration strategy. So you go and you sell it very low and if you sell it low, uh, you can attract a lot of customers. You can produce high quantity. You can capture the market. You may eliminate any competitors. So uh, uh, this you can gain this, especially if the price sensitive market and an inverse relationship of production, distribution cost to sales growth. So the more you produce, the less expensive it becomes per unit and therefore you can sell even more. And low prices must keep competition out of the market. Let me take examples of, uh, you guys remember Android and the, and the Apple iOS? You know, the Apple iOS was part of the mobile iPhone or iPad. Or, and this operating system, it owns a proprietary for Apple, and it's only available on their machines, and it's part of their premium price. On the other hand, Android, when they came into the market, they decided to sell Android for free. Why do they do that? They just want to penetrate the market. Now, all of these Chinese mobile phones, do you guys remember the old mobile Chinese mobile phones? Yeah. You know, remember they were all, they had the, the, the troubles with the language and the translations and the software always doesn't work well. And Now, all of these Chinese, they just download the Android free 
and uh, all of the Chinese mobile phones now are all uh, you know with Android so that gives a very good penetration for uh, Android and do you guys know who owns our Android Android is owned by Google you see so all of the uh, Google applications they work very smooth on Android do you see so uh, that's from a Google as a strategy is to penetrate the entire market so uh, that's market penetration are you guys okay with this? Now, if we move to product mix pricing strategies, we have uh, product line pricing, optional product li uh, price uh, pricing, captive product pricing, byproduct pricing, and product bundle pricing. Let's see uh, which, what does these mean. Number one, a product line pricing is when you put your prices depending on the line. Let's say, for example, if you sell uh, suits, uh, you can sell suits in uh, three different groups. Uh, one group will be, let's say, for hundred dollars. Other suits for hundred fifty, and a third suit product line for two hundred and fifty. Uh, if someone goes and you want to buy a suit, or let's say a dress for females, uh, you have uh, a dress for hundred, hundred fifty, two fifty. Which one you buy? Depends on you. Which one you buy, Sumaya? Depends on the style. How much? Yeah, depending on the style, but sometimes it is easier for the customer. They look at the different, you know, they see here we've got the 100s, here the 250s, and here are the 150s. Now, sometimes it is easier. You decide your budget. You say, I'll buy 150. You go to the 150, you check the designs, and you select one. Do you see? Because it's easier for you to price, and, uh, uh, and it's also, uh, you know, uh, easier for you to have your selection, your evoke set. You know, this is the set that you will uh, choose from and uh, you're happy with the price. Instead, if they are all mixed, you come and you like this one, oh, the price is out of budget. Do you see? So sometimes it can be easier uh, to make it easier for the customer to decide on price. Uh, and of course, there has to be some, uh, some sort of differentiation between the $100 dresses and the $150 dresses and the $250 dresses, you know, in terms of quality or design or that, so people can see that there is a big difference here. But that's one way we call it product, li product pr pr line pricing. It makes it easy for the customer to set your budget. The second type is optional product pricing. And the optional product pricing happens when you start to sell, um, you sell a bicycle uh, for, let's say, uh, $100. And then you have options. You can have your bicycle, it comes with a lamp. You can have your bicycle with a nice seat. Have your bicycle with a small basket on the back. And then if you want a basket on the back, you pay 20 more dollars. You want the light, that's five dollars more. You want this, you pay more. You have a lot of options that you add. So sometimes you go and you want to buy a car, okay? And then they tell you, you know what? Do you want this option? Do you want this option? Do you want this option? And then you add more options and then the price starts to increase. So those companies, they try to make this basic uh, product on the very lowest possible to attract customers. We'll give you a car for $10,000. Now you come, you see the car, there's only, you know, four tires and a body, <laughs> right? And then you need to add all of these options to add up to make it for $50,000. But the people don't feel that it's $50,000 car, rather it's 10000 and then here we've got the options. Another way we call this the captive product pricing. You guys remember the razors and the blade? You can have the blade and you have the razors and then, you know, sometimes they may, are willing to give you the razors for free. They give you the blade for free as long as you continue to buy the razors. Do you see? Remember when you go and you buy printer and cartridges, right? If I give you the printer free, I have no problem as long as you continue to buy from me the cartridges. Yes. Do you see? Uh, you know, they give you the SIM card. Did you guys remember one day those telecommunication companies, they provided the SIM cards for free? Yes. Sometimes they give you 1,000 riyal. Mm -hmm. They tell you, take this SIM card and take this 1,000 riyal, just use it. Do you see? And then the, because, you know, you have the SIM card and then you will buy scratch cards and the scratch cards where the airtime comes in and that's the money. So that's captive product pricing. And then we have the byproduct pricing. The idea of byproduct pricing is that you need to think about your byproduct. 
you know, if you are producing this, uh, you know, if uh, you know, there's an example in your book talks about the cow poo inside the zoo, and they said that uh, when they do the pricing, you know, for the zoo, they take into consideration that all of the animal poos they use it for fertilizers and they resell it and they make money on it, so it's part of their how this pricing work. Do you see? So sometimes you may be willing, let's say, you know what. You know, if you're selling this uh, you know, product or service, and there are some other things that can come along that can generate or cost money, you take that into consideration. And then the, four, the fifth type is the product bundle pricing. And product bundle pricing is uh, when you bundle. Do you guys remember if you go to uh, uh, one of these fast food restaurants, you want to buy uh, Pepsi. They sell you the Pepsi can for like 200 riyal. If you go to the supermarket, it's like 80 real. So if you go there, they give you this French fries for 200 real. If you go and you want to buy the sandwich, it will be like 1,000 real sandwich. So if you take them all together, they tell you we give you this combo meal. Do you want combo meal? Okay. You can get the, the drink and the French fries and the sandwich all for 1,200. Instead of if you buy them separately, it will be 1,400. So, you, oh, this is a great deal. Do you see? Then you buy the whole package for 1,200 or 1,000. Do you see? So, instead of they make money here, they make money here, they make money there, they just add it all to one big package, and people believe this is a value meal. So, instead of you go and you want to buy a sandwich, what do you end up buying? You buy a sandwich meal, which means you buy the sandwich and you buy the french fries and you buy the drink so the idea of bundling it gives people you know uh, incentive to buy more even though they didn't want to are you guys okay with those uh, product mix uh, pricing strategies uh let's see here uh, product line pricing we said we take into into account the cost differences between products in the line customer evaluation of their features and the competitor prices optional prices you take into account optional or accessory products along with the main product uh, captive involved products that must be used along with the main product by product it refers to the products with a little or no value produced as a result of the main product Producers will seek little or no profit other than the cost to cover storage and delivery. And then the product bundle pricing, combining several products as a reduced price. Are you guys okay with this? Uh, no. By product pricing. Uh, by product pricing, it uh, refers to the products with little or no value produced as a result of uh, the main product. So producers will seek little or no profit other than the cost to cover storage or delivery. So here, uh, let's say that you are, uh, remember those small bencher houses where they change your oil and your, uh, your car oil and you change your filter? Now when you go there, uh, you buy oil and they change the oil for you. But part of their cost is that the oil you, they take from you, they need to dispose it, right? They need to invent to have some sort of a special inventory and then they take it. And there's money they have to spend in order to dispose it. Do you see? So this is part of the cost of doing business. So they need to do this, uh, when they price their oil change service, they need to take that cost into consideration. Do you see? Let's take another example. If you go and you buy French fries, some of these places where they sell French fries, they have a lot of oil and they do a lot of frying. And the more they do frying, the more they sell this uh, French fries. Now, this oil, what do they do? They need to dispose it. They need to throw it once they finish. Now, what happened nowadays is that there are some companies, they come and they buy this. So whatever oil you have, they will come and they will pay you money. Now, this money that they will pay you, you have to consider it in the price of selling French fries. The answer is yes, you take that into consideration. So maybe now I can lower the price of French fries because I make money on the byproduct. In the oil change example, uh, maybe I need to raise the price because you know it becomes a cost to dispose the oil that uh, we do in the oil change. Do you see uh, the example? And do you want to see the pool? This maybe we can see the pool example uh, on the link. Any questions on this? Yeah. 